Hi, welcome to Real Magic Review. Today, I'm very, very glad to be reviewing Offbeat by Nick DeFat. Before I do this review, I'd like you to lock in your mind the web address onlinemagic.co because that's my online magic membership site that's what it is and it's been going for over 10 years now i was one of the early ones it's still going over 800 videos uh, new footage put on there every month at least three hours from our live sessions we had a great one the other day um me and luch and alex crow talked about the gig i had a few days before that this was in front of everybody all the members um where i died <laughs> Well, it wasn't all my fault. It was a sh it wasn't a complete death, but it was a shocker. It was a shocker, and it was great to talk. It was so useful for people that are uh, getting into it or just starting to perform to hear those stories as well, not just a hey, I did a great show. So anyway, that was good. I'll be uploading that and uh, and hundreds of videos on card moves, coin routines, coin moves, rope, everything you want, and special guests, as I've just mentioned. So, uh, oh, and like and subscribe course do that if you haven't done that already go on do it now you can do it now just click it now hit the little bell icon so you get notified um because i'm always going to go live on thursdays and quite often i don't <laughs> the various illnesses and ailments i'm getting old offbeat now another magic book comes out and i've read a lot of magic books not as many as i should read but and you kind of go how much more is there? <laughs> of course, it's, that's nonsense because it's you know, hundreds of years old and it will continue and there's great books still coming out. But when Nick's book came out, people were talking about it. It's been out a while now. And um, I hadn't seen Nick perform, but I'd heard about him and I'd heard that he, I think by then I'd heard he kind of stands in for Mac King, which is, you know, massive. I'd heard his name on various sort of tutorials, downloads back in the day of him coming up with creative ideas of how to work certain things which kind of ties in to this. Um, but I didn't really get it, of course, as you don't, until I saw him perform at the session and then I knew what all the fuss was about. Now, I've got to be careful not to get too gushy. And it's not just, you know, he's great, he's great, he's great. But it's important to me because it's been a while since someone has come along that I can watch and barely laugh out loud but still enjoy the strength of the magic, it's that perfect storm of everything. And I found that the first ever person I saw like that was when I watched Bill Malone, just laughing as well as seeing this, this sort of high skill level. And then people like Chris Kenner, and I could go on, of course, you know, the usual ones, Dave Williamson. It's kind of, anyway, I was going to say something, but I'll do it later. Um, but so this is another one of those people, but I've got to be careful not to, you know, it's not another one. It's almost like, oh, another one that does that. So it's not in that way at all, but someone that, that I respond to like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk very briefly, not briefly as in the, re the this review is not really a short review, but about each thing in the book, because people do kind of want to know what's in there. I might miss a couple out as I go through. I'm going to read them. I've made notes, them, but I'm just going to try and just say, this is what's in there. Just so you get an idea of the variety of stuff. Now, importantly, you know, Matt King opens the book by, you know, it's a hilarious, hilarious uh, introduction. And it, uh, introduction forward, I always get the two mixed up. Uh, let me have a look. I know, I know it's forward, there we go. Um, it, by Matt, it's just so, so funny. And the little footnotes are even funnier. Just brilliant. Um, but talking importantly about how Nick is so young and looks even younger. <laughs> And, you know, who is he to write this book? And, and when you read through his book, you, you know he's a perfect person to write this book. He's a person that is young but experienced and still has that passion and energy and isn't jaded. And I'm not saying people that are older are, but it's you can feel that in, in this book. In, importantly, has Nick, as Nick says in his four-word introduction, whatever it is that goes next. <laughs> so bad. Preface, preface, that one. <laughs> um people said why you know someone so young again writing a book rather than doing a dvd and a download and he says you know one of the first reasons is he wants a record of his work and that's what this is it's his work it's not his oh you've got to write a, write a book let's get this done and see what we can come up with to go in the book that sounds good which happens rather a lot i think but this is his work that he's done thousands and thousands of times and developed and 
that he wanted a record of it, and also he wants people to learn from it. You know, he he, he says if one person learns uh, from this book, that's a good thing. And I tell you what, there's going to be a lot more than one person learning from this book. And the other reason is that books. No, it's, it's you know it's not the books against DVDs thing, but for this kind of thing, of course, you don't want to. If this is your life's work up to now, and for someone his age, which I, you know, 20, mid, mid to late twenties, I think, maybe twenty five, I think, when he wrote this, I don't know. But this this is a life's work, and it's you know I'd be proud of having this when I was seventy, very proud. So you know you don't really want that in a in a format that's going to kind of go out of date, that's going to easier to be lost. This is ageless, and it's so important this is in a book. And when I read it, I, I kind of knew exactly, exactly what he meant. The, the illustrations by Vernon James are f just wonderful, and they really fit Nick's style and the photographs that were... F um, you know, th this is the detail he goes into. He wanted, he wanted it on film, or he was offered it on film, and he said, yeah, that's the way to go rather than just digital. And it, it, the whole thing is, you know, this is the book that's been crafted and thought about and, and cared about in its making. So it's 16 routines. If I read less than 16 now, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's what it says at the beginning. First of all, play money. Play money is, is a bill switch. Do we need another bill switch? This one's super clean and it can be handed out with a little bit of work, but it's one of those ones doing on stage, it's bang. He does it from with Monopoly money to money. It's gonna, you're gonna struggle with, with plastic notes, I think, but it's a super strong thing. And he gives you um, different, thoughts on on this and the other tricks and importantly when you read this don't do what I nearly did and skip certain tricks and go oh I don't really like those kind of tricks these the bits he's got within all of the routines are the gold he's got some gold there that that transfers to all tricks and routines that you may do so read every word of this please do uh, school of hard knots is his rope routine doing another it's a stunner he did also did this as a session and he's been doing this for a very, very long time. He talks later about how it was the opener for his show and it replaced an opener that wasn't quite working. A, a six, five card repeat, six card repeat. Um, and anyway, but the but it's a it's something I've looked at and gone for the first time. I might change my rope routine to incorporate that because it's it's great. Uh, the essays. There's a certain amount of essays in here. A certain amount. A number. Um, funny is one of them. And you know, you start reading these essays and you go, I've kind of read this stuff before, but then he always comes in with. A reason that this is a slightly different take on it because it comes again from his experience he's not telling you how to be funny but he's talking about his self-awareness basically really know are you funny or have you got funny bones or if you're not it's okay not to be we don't all have to try and be funny and it, it's a it was a really important it's a really important thing I think for not just new performers to think about but you know, people like me that have, that have gone, do I, need, do I actually need to make that funny or can I just be who I am? And it made me think of Darren Brown. Darren Brown's, I don't know why it made me think of Darren Brown. Well, I do, because I'm just about to tell you. But I see Darren Brown, he's not someone that's funny. He's just someone that's kind of witty and charming and nice, but you're engaged in it. And the point is he's being him or a version of himself rather than trying to be this, you know, this comedian or this something that he isn't. And it, for me, that was the kind of what I took from that. Uh, balloon Mammal. It's just a lovely, it's a card trick that's not a card trick. It's cards involved with animal names on, and some of these tricks can be very like, whatever. Again, I started reading this, and then after a while I went, this is brilliant. It involves him actually making a balloon animal, but as he says in it, you know, it's easy for us to magicians to forget how powerful it is to find a selected card. It just that is a powerful thing, so if we can find a way of doing that that's entertaining and strong, brilliant, and he does exactly that here. Uh, you've got fail. Again, I started reading it and went, this is a kind of, you know, homing card to envelope kind of thing. And then halfway through, I was going, I might actually put this in my show. It, it's, it's genuinely, a, it's a master class in routining. In, you know, the idea of t using simple slides when you, when you can, but also something like a subtlety, like a, a Vernon replacement, is that what it's called? Oh, I can't remember. When you do a double and place it back onto the deck, just stuff like that and why you'd use that at that point. So again, it's why I think it's important to know your chops, but also don't feel like you've got to use them all the time. It's a beautiful routine, a card to envelope routine, a name card to envelope routine with a kind of twist in the middle. Um, learn to stop worrying. Uh, how I stop, stop, how I stopped worrying and learn to love the bomb, I think, um, which is of course a reference to the, the Kubrick film about bombing on stage and having, uh, he's got another thing later about bad shows, but 
again, someone's <laughs> something to quite recently. That was lovely. Party blower. I've bought, I've bought quite a lot of things reading this book, which again is quite rare. I've bought some party blowers. Lovely gag when you, when you, blow, just like, when you blow one of those party blowers through your ear. You sort of, and it goes, great. And I've bought all the stuff to do it. Uh, key to freedom. You know, seven keys to bold paint routine. Uh, I've never been a fan of that. If you don't know it, you've got a load of keys. One you prove that works and you, the rest don't. And you throw it all in, mix them up and you pick up the one that unlocks the thing. OK, that's great. And there's been versions with like a, a money that's been like locked in a like Perspex thing. And, you know, you pick it and they don't and like a bank night kind of thing. But this is, uh, again, I nearly bought the handcuffs and I thought, no, I don't need to buy everything. It's a really simple method and very bold but you just look at it and go, that, you could just play that so well. And instead of, you know, just unlocking a box or something, you're handcuffed to a spectator. And he says there's different ways of doing it. You could be handcuffed. You know, you could do it with friends and you're handcuffed to uh, the radiator or whatever. And I just think there's some, uh, there's so much potential. I just thought that image of being handcuffed to a spectator and going through the process and the, the routine that he shares, I think is, is great. Uh, openers. Don't we, we need some really good advice on openers. The usual advice is, you know, do something that hits them hard, do some magic really quickly on that. And he's saying, no, well that, yeah, that will work for some people, but it might not work for you. And actually it doesn't work for me. And I struggled for years ago. And why can't I open with, you know, extreme burn and these things that everybody does. But I kind of feel a bit like him where I need to do something else before I, I start hitting them with magic and I need to create rapport. And it was, Again, it's kind of about self-awareness and about knowing who you are, but also trying different things and not just following the rules that, that people give to you. Tea bag, sorry, I cut there and, um, and kicked the camera, so I might be in a different position now. I have bought the stuff for this. This is a wonderful routine, which is a thought of card from a deck, vanishes from the deck and ends up in a cup of tea that you've introduced first of all. You bring the cup of tea, you show the tea bag, you put the tea bag in, you like make the cup of tea, put the saucer on top, card vanishes, you take the saucer off, you pull the tea bag out and there is no tea bag on it. There is a folded card on it. It's a stunning piece of work. And straight away, I got all the stuff to do it. And again, I might put it in my show. A stick of gum. I saw the picture and went, oh, it's a gum trick. Gum's going to change into different gum. It's not as a version of bank night, but it's a lot more fun. And for some people, it's going to have a lot more meaning and be a lot more contemporary. Nest of office supplies, which is his version, which I think he also did at the session, which instead of doing the usual card to wallet and envelope on stage or, or in close up, you've got it in um, uh, a like jiffy bag. A, I don't know if you call them, do they call them jiffy bags in the States? But, um, you know, a bubble wrap envelope thing, sort of that. Uh, and then an envelope inside that and it's kind of like a nest of wallets but it's bigger and it's bolder and it looks again it looks kind of more fun and a little bit more like why would you have an old man's wallet and I'm not saying that's a problem I do a wallet all the time but you know what I mean um, another essay about bad shows and how you can learn from them uh, trends are traps you know we all see everybody's doing the same kind of tricks but it is refreshing when you read someone say let's just go you know you've got all this stuff you don't have to have to follow that and he doesn't that's not the, the essay is much more than that but again when we read it it reminds us and i think that's that's important for people like me full contact i love this tom malika's um site and site savers sorry uh i love tom malika's just i've rewatched it since where he um he pulls a basically pulls a, a thing out of his eye wipes it and it's a massive contact lens and nick actually uh, got the rights to this and released it a long time ago, his version of it, and this is that. And I'm desperately trying to get the flip top contact lens case that you can do with this because I just think it's just a lovely trick and a lovely bit. Uh, Sealer Boy, I'm not going to tell you what that is, it's iron, it's worth the price of the book alone. Um, lovely idea, very, very simple, something that you can, once you read it, you'll just go, I can use that for everything, and you'll be able to do it straight away. Double Day um, is uh, his version of Al Quran's gold medallion routine where he's got a coin and someone calls out any date. So get someone out of the audience and they read the date on the coin. It's the date that was called out. Really brilliant and a lovely way, as he said, to start practicing dual reality in a way that you know is going to work and is, is very simple. Uh, 15 crayons to pocket, like David Williams' 51 cards to pocket. It, it's a gimmick that you make with a set of crayons and they all vanish and end up in your pocket except for one. Uh, again, there's more to it than that, but I'm not going to go into it more. Mismatch is a, a kind of match book routine where you end up with an impossible ob object where the... One of the matches halfway up, it has the head of the match halfway up it and at the top, uh, which is great. And 
uh, habit forming. I know this is going. Uh, oh, if you want me, if you want me, go to a butcher. That's the idea of that is to you know stay in your lane. You know you don't have to do everything. Uh, habit forming. It's a, as he said. What he say? It's, it's a, a paper hat routine that doesn't end up with you wearing a 1930s bonnet, <laughs> which I thought was brilliant. Uh, and uh, and it's it's a it ends up you're wearing a kind of nun's hat basically. That's the the habit forming of the title. Uh, an essay about writing and about his um, uh, about different ways that you can write. I can't let that go. Um, I, I said, what did I say? Something like writing the essays about different ways of writing. <laughs> I think I was getting tired. It's not about that. It's about comedy writing and how there are structures that you can learn with comedy writing, which you know has been really helpful for me. Um, but also, there's a kind of there's not an exact science to it, and, and you've got to go your own way with it, really, and sort of trust sometimes trust your instincts. And die another day, which is his Billy McCoon uh, die uh, coloured. What's it called? What's the actual routine? Colour changing dye silk. Yeah, I don't know what the routine is, but it's half dyed silk. That's what it is. The, the dye tube, you know, when it, you put the, the white one and it comes out red, and then it ends up. Um, being uh, white and red. Oh my God, that's awful, isn't it? <laughs> oh, sorry about that, Nick, if you ever watch this. That's the worst, oh, the worst way of saying that. But anyway, it's his routine of that. He did that in the session as well. It's brilliant. Nick really, really takes all these routines and, and breathes fresh life into them. And as he says, you know, I think it's in the the crayons to pocket routine. He says, you know, as, as an exercise, take take something that's been there for ages and breathe your answer. What can you do to it to make it better? And I don't I don't mean better just for the sake of doing it differently, but actually make it better for you and suit you. And it's really inspiring. It, this is a really exciting book, and I think it is one of those books that, you know, it, it reminded me of Totally Out of Control and Out of Control by Chris Kenner, and not because, and I know that, you know. Chris Kenner and and Nick know each other and that they've I think um I saw Nick do a, a, a routine that Chris Kenner used to do so the connection there anyway but it but it didn't remind me it wasn't like oh Nick's trying to write a book like Chris Kenner but it had a kind of authenticity to it it was genuinely funny the way it was written genuinely engages I've read this twice back to back without props in hand and enjoyed it which is very difficult for me to to do. I've bought the props, it's inspired me to buy them and not do them straight off the page, but I'll tell you what, it's very tempting to do that. He says, you know, he doesn't expect people to do that and you should put your own thing into it, but they're so good, you kind of go, I don't know if I can make that better. But of course, I don't just want to do, you know, Nick to Fat routines. But I really, if you're going to buy any magic book, especially if you're a performer, but even if you're someone that wants to come up with your versions of routines or, you know, go back to the classics and go, you know, they might be classics, but how can I bring them up today? I really, really, really recommend it. It's a brilliant book. At the beginning, Matt King, he says something, I'm going to read it actually, he says something about um, Nick's, you know, he's not just an expert on magic, he has knowledge on music, art, all that kind of stuff, that the outside of magic, which, which Nick also talks about, by the way, I think I've missed out that bit. I also mean he knows a lot about music, art and film, and a whole host of other completely impractical stuff. Uh, and that's because he has completely disregarded the practical stuff. Nick doesn't have a driver's license or own a couch. <laughs> he does. Uh, there is a footnote on that as well. But he knows all that, um, he knows that all that seemingly trivial Exp expertise informs his performance and his writing but he knows all that seemingly trivial expertise informs his performance and his writing even if only subliminally and I would say it's way more than subliminally I mean I know what he means but subliminally is easy for me to say subliminally so this is a book not just on magic it's on creativity it's on approach it's on you know having the courage to follow what you feel is right rather than follow the rules you know and he says at the end i think it's at the end or maybe it's the beginning that he thanks john lovick and gave for yuri uh i'm sorry if that pronunciation is wrong uh, who published a book uh for helping him make this the best book it can be and they but more he has definitely done that but i can't do it justice you gotta read it that's offbeat uh, by Nick DeFat. Thank you, Gabe, for sending that to me and Nick for, um, for agreeing to send that for me. No, this is great. This is lovely. I'm um, that routine. So good. <laughs> that spoon routine. Uh, I really appreciate it and um, I'm very glad I've read it. 
take care have a good one any comments do put them below and like and subscribe and now go and check out onlinemagic.co thank you very much